So here you have 9x squared times y cubed. There's a negative sign out there. And you have 12 times x times y squared. Now, in order to not destroy the original problem, I'll just rewrite it. Negative 9x squared y cubed divided by 12 times x times y squared. So how do we simplify this? Well, I have a negative 9 on top. I have a uh, 12 on bottom. Now, forget about the negative sign. I can divide the top by 3 and the bottom by 3 to simplify this fraction. So I'll strike this out. 9 divided by 3 gives me 3. And 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. Now, the numbers you see I have left over are 3 and 4, which are fully simplified. I can't do anything more, so I've done a good job. Now, with the x's, I have an x and an x squared. So this entire x will cancel with this one. Now, notice I could write a 1 here. That's fine, 2, and I can replace it with a 1, but you don't really need to because when you read it at the end of the day, you're going to read the x, and you're not going to read any exponent there, so you're going to write an x in your answer. It's an implied 1. You can write a 1 here if you want. You don't have to. Now, y squared and y cubed, both of these y's will cancel here in exactly the same thing. I could put a 1 here if I wanted. 3 minus 2 is 1. But really, I don't have to because when I write the final answer, I still have a negative sign. I have a 3. And then I read these here. There are no exponents there. So I read it as x times y. On the bottom, I just have a 4. And notice how when I cancel through the y squared, I drew my line through the exponent and all the way through the variable. And then this goes all the way through the variable. So I can, at a quick glance, see that there's nothing left in the bottom except for the number. So that's it, negative 3xy over 4. All right, next problem. We're going to kind of crank through these and give you practice. x times y squared times z cubed over x cubed y squared times z. And we'll just rewrite it again. x times y squared z cubed over x cubed y squared z. So first I look at x's. I have a single x on the top, right, which will cancel with one of them on the bottom, leaving a 2. Notice when I drew my line, I only struck through the exponent. You don't want to confuse yourself and strike through the whole variable, right? That way I read it as x squared. Then among the y's, I have y squared on top and on bottom, so both of them cancel. When I draw my lines, I'm striking through the, the variable name and through the exponent, so I know that it's all gone. And then this z will cancel with only one of these, leaving a 2 behind. So again, I'm not striking through the z here, so that now when I read my final answer, it's easy. All I see that I have left is z squared, and on the bottom, all I have left is x squared. Uh, just like that. So it's z squared over x squared. That's the final answer. All right, now let's take a new one. What if we have parentheses 2r to the fourth power, and on the bottom we have 2r to the fourth power? Now notice the difference between the two here, right? Notice the difference. You know, don't get confused. Here I have 2r, and the entire thing is raised to the fourth power. Here, the 2 down here is not raised to any power but the only the r is raised to the fourth power. So you can't really start canceling anything yet because I know that you want to, but the problem is this exponent applies to everything in here. So you want to, before you cancel anything, you want to distribute anything in to get the final expression before you do any cancellations. Because these, this 2 and this r is kind of hidden inside the parentheses. I can't directly cancel down there until I bust them out of jail, so to speak. So... This exponent, if you remember the rule, is going to get distributed into the 2 and into the r as exponent. So it'll be 2 to the 4th power times r to the 4th power. And then on the bottom, I have 2r to the 4th power. Now I think you can see a little bit more clearly how to proceed. Because this 2 on the bottom is really to the 1st power. So I can cancel this 2 with one of them leaving 3 behind. And I have r to the 4th on the top and r to the 4th on the bottom. So this entire r to the 4th cancels with that r to the 4th. So all I really have left is 2 to the power of 3 uh, there. And you can leave it like that. 2 to the power of 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So however you want to write it, it's fine with me. All right, let's do another one. Let's say, what if we have 3 times t squared raised to the third power divided by 3t to the third power raised to the second power? 
Now, again, I know that you really want to start striking things immediately, but you've got to be really careful. Yes, there is a 3 on the top and the 3 on the bottom, but there's exponents applied to both, so we can't really do anything directly yet. We have a t squared and a t cubed. I know you want to start canceling stuff, but you can't go inside the parentheses like that and start canceling interior terms when you, when you have these exponents that are still sitting out here. So you have to, in almost all cases, ex explode those exponents out first until you have everything just multiplied together and then you can do the cancellation. So the 3 will be applied to each term here. So it'll be 3 to the power of 3, t to the power of 6 because, don't forget, you got to multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. And then you have the 2 going into both of those, so you'll have 3 to the power of 2, t to the power of 6, like this, because down here, again, 3 times 2 is 6. Now that you have it in this form, you can see right away 3 squared. I have two, threes on the, I have, uh, two of them on the bottom here, three of them on the top, so both of these 3's can get canceled, and I'm just going to strike through the exponent, leaving one behind, and then the t to the 6, the entire thing cancels on the top and the bottom, and so the only thing that I really have left is three. That's the final answer for that problem. Alright, so let's shift everything up here and just do a few more just to get some more practice. Now this one's interesting. What if I have x plus y times x minus y over x plus y squared? Now I just got through telling you that you don't want to do anything until you handle the parentheses first. All right? But in this case, it's a little bit different because here I have an x plus y on the top and I have an x plus y on the bottom, but this one, the entire th term is squared. So really what's going on here is that I actually can, in this case, cancel through this one because this is to the first power and I'll cancel that exponent in the bottom, leaving me only one in the bottom. So in this case, on the top, I'm going to have x minus y. I can leave the parentheses if I want and then on the bottom it'll be x plus y. Now again, you might be confused, well he just told me not to do that. Well not quite, the previous example was a little bit different. This was the previous example. You see here, this is 3t squared and this is 3t cubed. So these terms were different, they weren't the same. So I couldn't, you know, I couldn't cancel them wholesale like I'm doing right now. These are exactly the same terms. This one's raised to the first power, this one's raised to the second power. So I'm able to cancel the entire term with the exponent because the exact same term, the exact same term was in the top as it was in the bottom. If we go back up a little bit farther to this one, you can see that I have 2r, that was raised to the fourth, this is 2r to the fourth. These terms are not the same because this 2r was raised to the fourth power, but this 2 here wasn't raised to anything. So this term is, was different than the top and the bottom. But in this case, this exact thing was raised to the first power. This exact same thing was raised to the second power. So I can treat it like any cancellation. And I can cancel this with just one of them on the bottom. And if you really want to kind of blow it out there, you can kind of do a check. If you were to expand this, it would be x plus y times x minus y on the top on the bottom, since it's x plus y squared, it'll be x plus y times x plus y. Now notice on the top and the bottom, what do I have? I have an x plus y here and an x plus y here, so again it just leaves x minus y over x plus y. So that if you wanted to really expand it out and prove it to yourself, that's, that's what you do. So you're looking for common terms. If you see, even if it's a large term, if you see it exact same term, multiple uh, raised to exponents on the top and the bottom, you can cancel them, but you just you do have to be careful. Final problem for this lesson, 32 a squared b c cubed over 20 a b c. All right, so 32 and 20, how do I simplify that? Well, I can divide both of them by 2, right? I can ask also I can divide top and bottom both by 2, but then I start thinking about it more and I see that I can actually divide top and bottom by 4 as well, because 8 times 4 is 32. So if I divide top by 4, this will become 8, and the bottom divide, divide 20 by 4, this will be 5. And the numbers 8 and 5, those are fully simplified, so that's good. Now as far as the a goes, I have a squared up here and a on the bottom, so I can just cancel the entire a, leaving me one a on the top. This b will completely cancel with the single b above, and this c will cancel with only one of them on the top, leaving two behind, two c's behind. So on the top I have 8 times a times c squared, and on the bottom I will have 5, 
and that's it because A, B, and C are all have, have strikeouts in there. So that's the answer. 8 AC squared over 5. That's the final answer. Dividing monomials by monomials, basically learning how to cancel things in algebra is really, really important. So you're going to keep doing this as we go on, um, but the problems will get a little more complicated. So for now, just make sure you understand this. Uh, follow me on to the next lesson, and you will continue learning your skills in algebra. Make sure you can do all of these problems and follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue learning how to do division. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.